Hi everyone, Mandy here to talk about the UT Registration Plus Google Chrome extension. Um, I did a little bit of research and currently it is only available for the Google Chrome web browser. So if you don't have Google Chrome, um, you'll definitely want to look into downloading it. It is free. Um, you can just go to Google Chrome um, through your search, en search engine and download it and then um, search for UT um, Registration Plus extension and it'll bring you to this page over here where it says remove from Chrome, it'll say something along the lines of add to Chrome. Um, and so you'll go through, follow the process for installing that. Um, I've had this for a few semesters um, and figure um, most of us know how to do this. So if not, um, I'll be happy to help you. Just send me an email, let me know, and I can um, either meet up with you in person or do a video to show how to do that. But um, I wanted to make sure that we had enough time to go over the actual tool. So um, what this is, um, is an extension that you can add to your Google Chrome browser to help making um, registering for classes a lot easier. Um, as this shows, um, you can see um, your weekly schedule, you can see what classes um, um, are available um, with your schedule, what conflict, what will work, um, and different things like that. And I'll talk more about these different tools as we go through. Another thing um, to note is that in the course catalog, UT um, only shows a limited list, um, but with this, re um, a, a limited list per page, excuse me. And so with this tool, rather than having to click through multiple pages, it loads all of the classes into one page. And so you don't have to move away from the page to see um, what all is going on for that subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the spring catalog. Um, I'm a communication studies major, as I may have mentioned before. And so um, I know that I'm gonna be taking some CMS upper division courses. I'm a junior. Um, and uh, that's just my path. I've met with my advisor, kind of have an idea of what to look for. Um, so the way that this tool works is um, you'll go to the course registrar, uh, registrar site, um, go to the spring 2020 course catalog, look for your classes, and then um, you'll know that the, the extension is working because over here on the right hand side is this plus column and this cute little icon that's got a graph. Um, I know that I'm going to be taking um, a class um, this semester with a QR code and here that is um, the crowds clouds uh, and community I said QR code I meant QR flag um, this is um, over here the classes will show whether or not they have a flag um, I'm sure you're familiar with that because you registered over the summer during um, your orientation and so I'm sure that this is very familiar but just in case quick little reminder. So um, as I said, I'm gonna be taking this uh, Crowds, Clouds, and Community class. Um, it is only offered once per semester, so I'm keeping that in mind as I register. Um, but I click this little icon that looks like the graph, and as you can see, uh, pops this nifty little information um, pop-up. Uh, it gives me the course description, tells me any prereq uh, prerequisites. Um, this one's just you have to be upper division. Um, partially taught as a web-based course, so I know that this is going to be hybrid, so that's interesting. So I may not actually be going to a classroom all the time. Um, I may be doing some of the work at home um, online, even though it's got a scheduled class time. Um, here, um, RMP stands for Rate My Professor. Um, so I can click that and it'll open up a new tab and it'll bring me to a search result. Um, so if you're not familiar with Rate My Professor, um, it's this website where students can go on and um, give their reviews of professors. Um, we'll go ahead and click into Josh's, uh, Joshua, Dr. Josh Barber's page, um, and we can see just some overall tags. It says a lot of papers, gives good feedback, but 4.4, level of difficulty, kind of challenging, but not impossible. So, um, like I said, this just gives you some feedback. I always take this with a grain of salt. Um, some professors I've had that have not had great reviews on here have been actually really fantastic um, professors. So sometimes this isn't always accurate. Sometimes students are really great about checking out the, um, taking the time to do a review about somebody that they didn't like, but not so much the homework. So, um, but it can give you an idea. Um, the, other tool that I actually like a lot more than Rate My Professor is this ECIS tool. Um, and what this stands, or what this is, is um, each semester um, that a professor teaches, they do an evaluation, and this will give you 
the overall um, uh, evaluation scores that they received uh, by each semester in class. So as you can see here, his average is a 4.9 out of 5. Um, so he's almost excellent. Um, and it compares him to the organization he's under um, communication and the communication school. And then this shows the university average along with the college average. So um, although there aren't specific comments here, I find this to be very helpful um, because you get more responses. Like as you can see, there were 36 where he may not have as many reviews over here. Yeah, there's only a few reviews. So it gives you kind of a, I think a little bit maybe more accurate um, uh, view of the professor. Um, it's a little bit early for this to be active, but I'll go ahead and click it. Um, you'll probably, um, what you'll find is after you've registered for classes and it's getting closer to that time to buy books, um, so closer to the beginning of the spring semester, you may want to come back um, to the course catalog, use this tool, and um, go to the textbook section and um, access your textbooks this way. There's also a little bit of an easier way through the uh, UT registration site and um, maybe we can talk about that in another video in the future. But in case you were curious as to what the class, uh, what textbooks are, you can also use this tool and go um, to the fall 2019 um, course catalog if you want to see um, maybe what a class um, most recently has used in the semester and this tool will work. Um, Another really awesome uh, feature is this past syllabi. Um, if you have not already been familiar with this um, section, you can look at uh, previous syllabi from classes. Um, you can search with or without the instructor um, if you have the course number or if you want to see maybe you really loved a professor and you want to see some of the other courses they teach and what they look like. Um, I had a really great um, professor for an undergraduate course um, or UGS course but I uh, wanted to see what their um, regular classes look like since there's a lot more structure to those UGS courses um, that's dictated by the university rather than the professor themselves and so um, that can be kind of helpful. But um, for example, this spring 2019 was the last time that this course was taught. So I can go and I can see maybe what the most recent um, syllabi syllabus said for that class and kind of get an idea of, you know, the amount of work that I'm going to have to be put into. This class um, said that it was partially online, offline, see if that's the way that they did it um, last semester and kind of figure out the points and things that I'm going to be expected to do so that I can, um, uh, like I said, balance my coursework. I know that um, I'm very uh, project-based, uh, like that's my strong suit. So if there's a class with like a lot of exams or a lot of quizzes, that may not be a good class for me to take with um, another class that's heavy on those things. This one has two exams and then some laboratory assignments. So, you know, in my head, I can know, all right, that'll be all right. Um, I'll be good to go um, as long as um, I don't have another class that, um, excuse me, or as, as long as I continue to keep the classes where they have just mostly laboratory assignments and things like that as I go along. Anyway, um, so you go back here and um, I have decided I'm definitely taking this class, so I'll click this add course. It'll get added to my schedule, which I'll show you in a minute, but what I wanna point out here is, um, now that I've added this class, if I was interested in this field study in organizational communication, it is canceled, but we'll pretend it doesn't say that. It's crossed out here. Or for example, gender and communication. This class is crossed out. So I know I these two classes meet at the same time, so I have a conflict with them. So if I wanted to take gender and communication over the crowds, clouds, and community, um, I would have to um, decide whether or not I wanted to drop that or add and add this one or vice versa, that sort of thing. I know that I need this one for that QR flag, so I'm keeping it as is. Um, but perhaps I want to take celebrity and culture. Um, again, you could just click here, add course, and then uh, go about um, doing the same thing just throughout. And what's really neat is, and I'll just, I'm just going to go ahead and add a few um, random courses just so that um, we can fill out and see what the schedule looks like. This class, it looks like I can add it. I, it won't conflict. And let's take a look here. We're going to do a history course as well. I need to get um, a, a 
for out of the way. So we'll do intro to American studies. All right. So I've got uh, my classes here and I can go over here and I can see I'm registered for 14 hours. Um, that's because this Greek class is five hours and the rest of these are three. So there you go. That makes perfect sense. So this is a quick like Okay, I can see what's going on with my schedule. Um, right now it says can't register because it's not my registration time. You can find out more about your um, registration info um, on your registration information sheet. It does have a lot of personal information, so I'm not gonna click it, um, but you can access it through the link that I shared in the email or by clicking this registrar info button. Um, uh, and it will bring you to this page and then um, you can choose to look at your registration information sheet um, for the either fall or spring 2020, you wanna do that. You can go in there and you can look at to see if you have any financial bars, if you have any um, registration bars, advising bars, anything like that that's gonna prevent you from registering at the time specified on this sheet. Like I said, there's some personal information like my address and everything, so I'm not gonna go into there, but um, another easy way to access that information. Um, let's see here, we're gonna go ahead and close out on some of this. Um, let me go back. Oh, okay. So then you can, um, you have the list here, but you can also click my schedule and it'll show you, um, what your schedule will look like Monday through Friday. So the cool thing is, is that, um, you know, this class, uh, if I wanted to click on it, I can see more information and it'll take me to the actual course page. Um, whenever, um, registration's open, I can click to add it and register, uh, Registration is not available this time, but uh, go from there and get all the detailed information. I usually copy and paste this into like a notepad just so that I have it to ready to go um, more easily as well. But this is really neat because, like I said, um, uh, when it's when it is time to uh, to register, you can also do this and click register, and it'll take you to that registration page. Um, and you can see where the room is. This is gonna be art 1.102. Um, this one is going to be in Wagner, room 10. This one's gonna be in below um, New Center for Media, uh, or Center for New Media, um, 3.206. Uh, this one will be in BMC, 1.202. And it looks like a pretty good schedule, no, nothing before 10 a.m. and I'm getting out no later than 3.30 and I only have to stay till noon on Friday. So um, this is just a quick look at what this tool can do for you and um, uh, how it can be useful. If you want um, to meet one-on-one -on -one or ask me questions, you can feel free to email me. We can meet um, via like Skype uh, or one of these Zoom meetings, or we can do, um, I can meet up with you on, uh, in person on campus and walk you through this in a slower fashion so you can get um, uh, more information. I included from the Google uh, UT Registration Plus uh, schedule. This shows the different um, features that it has. I included that in my email just directly from this website. Um, if you have any questions about the actual tool, um, you can contact them um, through the support channel on the, on the app. Uh, website. Um, and if you need anything else, um, I am always here uh, to talk to you and glad to help. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Y'all have a great night.